This is my last commission for 2023. This cottonwood slab is from our friends at Cali Hardwoods. And it's very clean. It has very minimal damage or rot. Um, and our customer really liked that. What I'm doing here is to just seal the wood uh, top and bottom with shellac to prepare for the epoxy pour. This is one of the many mistakes I made on this build because I should have used two or even three coats of shellac to seal the, the surfaces. I think it's because cottonwood is a very loosely grained wood type of wood, if I can say that. So even with one coat of shellac, uh, some of the epoxy ended up bleeding into the surrounding areas and I had a lot of trouble taking it out. But that will come later. Here's the first awkwardly flipping table you'll see in this video. This is the bottom side. I taped it up. Uh, there's a medium crack going down all the way through the bottom in the middle. So uh, I want to seal it up before I can do anything else to the slab. And here you can see the top is really clean. Uh, but it does have just one tiny void here. So I'm just cleaning it out using a very dull chisel that's reserved for this type of stuff. And eventually I switched to some uh, dental uh, tools to, to clean out the smaller sections. I'm using some tabletop epoxy. This is from Stone Coat and a uh, black dye to fill in the voids. The tabletop epoxy takes about 24 hours to dry and I ended up doing, I think, two pours on this because uh, it shrinks a little bit when it's drying. So I ended up not filling the, the voids entirely. It's always very satisfying to see, you know, just epoxy sipping down uh, the, the voids and slowly filling it up. Although I did make a mess though. What I should have done here is use some caulk to, to make a dam so that I can over pour a little bit and that'll prevent it from seeping below the surface uh, when it shrinks so that I can make only one pour. When the epoxy dried, I attempted to sand it down with some uh, 3M extract sandpaper and did up not working out exactly as I thought. It takes way too much time to do it this way. So eventually I just gave up and moved on to working on the bottom side. And I learned my lesson this time. So here's the caulking to make a dam to provide some uh, barrier for the epoxy to, to pull up. And after a day when that cured, I moved on to sealing up the cracks in on the side with a combination of the CA glue and some leftover epoxies that I had on hand. These cracks aren't very structural in nature, so CA glue is completely fine to just do some cosmetic works on the side. After all the filling is done, I use my router sled to flatten both sides to, well, flat. The router sled is surprisingly faster than I imagined. I went through three passes on the bottom side here, I think in about 20 to 30 minutes. And so here's a, a better look at the the bottom side. You can see the crack in the middle is completely filled. The table legs are from Floyd Line Design. The customers picked them out and I really like the shape of this. 
I think it's called Wine, wine Glass. This is the third time I'm working with Floyd Line Design uh, table bases and legs. And they're really growing on me. So I'm marking the base to make a recess uh, and also give me a reference of where to put the, the base because uh, we want it to be as close to the edge as possible so that we can fit two people uh, on each side of the table. Is Eventually it's gonna go be a dining table for four people. I'm using the C channel from Bidwell company. They are another local small businesses that I really want to support and their products is very, very, very high quality. I uh, really love the powder coating and the rigidity of the C channels. So now I'm just making the cutout and resets for the C channel to be inlaid into the bottom side of the of the wood. And I got this track saw stops from Etsy, and this is the first time I'm trying them out with my uh, router attachment that goes onto the track. And I'm I think I kind of like it. It's not going to be an exact snug fit um, because I want to leave some room for the wood to move and contrast over the seasons. I made a template for the leg bases to be inlaid into the slab also. I don't have to do this, but I wanted to because it looks good and it's just an extra detail that will hopefully set my craft apart from the competition you know plus i wanted to practice more inlaying with my uh, router so i just used a templating bushing to uh to guide my bit and i think i made it a little bit too large this time uh, i could definitely go in a little bit tighter and to further reinforce the cracks i'm using the slap stitcher Borrowed it from Derek in from Cali Hardwood, so thank you very much. Now I can mark the places to put in my threaded inserts for attaching the C channel and the table legs. Using a little bit of wood glue to provide some lubrication for the threading inserts because actually I don't know uh, some people say you don't need nothing at all some people say you need thread lock some people use wood glue um, I've used wood glue I've used uh, CA glue I've used nothing at all and so far it didn't actually make any difference so <laughs> I guess I'm just cycling through different methods if you know exactly what I should do here, um, leave a comment down below and you know maybe I can learn a little bit more from you guys. mentioned before is how great it is to work with Kali hardwoods when the customer picked out the slab it wasn't completely dry so they put it back into their kiln for I think another three or four weeks to get it down to um, the right moisture content uh, equilibrium for the customers and also they serviced it on both sides prior to delivery so when I got the table it's 
very flat. It's in great working condition and I didn't have to do any fixing or very minimal work on it. And here's the flattening on the top side. My router actually broke down in the middle of this uh, flattening session and it's just starting to make a lot of noises and it wasn't cutting at all. So I made a quick trip to my local Lowe's and bought myself a new motor. to flattening something I want to improve on my router sled is to just add some dust collection maybe because it made a mess in my workshop every time I need to flatten something there's some bubbles in the epoxy and some micro pits that haven't been filled or it was they were exposed so this is a rain gate F not filler Type of thingy uh, it works basically like hot glue so you, you you put it in and use the aluminum block to take out the heat to to let it um, cure I think or, or dry or cool down and then you just use a very tiny scraper to uh, flush scrape the, the surfaces it's really fast this is all in real time what you're seeing right now and I've every time I used it, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Sometimes it just takes a couple more passes for you to get everything flush and everything filled. And after that, it's just a quick sand and you'll have a perfectly even surfaces. as well start sanding down the entire slab I think I went from 80 grit to 120 and the bottom side went up to 180 and the top side went up to 220 Now here's the second mistake that I've made during this build. I wanted to clean up the, the, the slab after I sanded it. So I used some mineral spirits. But what I did not know is you're supposed to put the mineral spirits onto a rag and then wipe it on, not pouring it onto the wood. So my wood, my, the slab actually di didn't dry for like three days so I have to wait three days before I can move on to uh, the finishes. The finish I'm using is general finishes high, high performance polyurethane in flat and I'm spraying it with a Fuji. Uh, it's, it's The Fuji is actually from my friend uh, they used it and let me borrow it to, uh, to spray finishes from time to time and I really like it. It's easy to use it doesn't you know, it's easy to use, it's easy to clean, so it's slowly growing on me. I'm spraying with my garage door open to give me some more space to work with. And also, I don't want to have oversprays on my workbench or my table saw. I want to avoid that as much as possible. So, although this is not ideal, this is what's working for me so far. I'm putting down, I think, five coats on the bottom. The first coat is just to soak the wood and saturate the fibers with the finishes because it's, uh, it's water-based, so it's going to be rough. So the first one or two coats are very heavy-handed and I'm sanding very heavily in between two to um, it's sort of like water, water popping the, the wood and you know sanding it back down the top fibers. If you can count 
exactly how many bow ties I have on this slab at the bottom. Uh, leave me down in the comments how many you found. So the first coat isn't supposed to look very good. It's very uneven right now, but that's okay. We just want to sand it down and keep applying coats. Eventually we'll get it very even and um, uniform in sheen. So this is the second coat. This is, I think, after the third coat, starting to look better and better. And I just kept doing coats. And this is after the fifth coat. And it's the final coat. So I used a very fine sandpaper, I think 5000 grit, on a sanding block uh, and sanding with the grain just to break down some of the dust nibs that might have been trapped into the finish. But the finish, it looks pretty good. I think and I really like how it turned out it really preserved the lightness of the of the slab and not make it yellow because that's something we're trying to avoid here putting the C channel back on and I can flip it back to the top side to start working on that here's the second last awkwardly flip, flipping tables you'll see in this video I want to at least to put two coats down on the top side on the same day I finish the bottom side because if I don't do that then the top side is exposed to air and moisture it have a small chance it might change shapes or it might move a little bit and expand or warp uh, even though I have a C channel on the bottom I, I don't want to take the chances of that happening so I I'm planning out very very carefully when i start spraying so that i can get through the fifth coat on the bottom and still have time to do a couple coats on the top just to seal it up so that it's not going to absorb moisture unevenly and so that day i worked well into the night just to seal up the top side This is how it looks immediately after I spray, so still wet. And the second day I came back, started to working on it again. I think I sprayed in total seven or eight coats on the top side to really have a build up and have it really flat and and you know looking nice and uniform. And this is the final coat after eight coats and I'm liking it. Love how they turned out. It's the last time I'm flipping tables, I swear. And here I'm just bringing it back into my shop to uh, put out the ceramic coating from Blacktail Studio. I use some general all-purpose cleaner just to wipe down the the top um, to to get rid of any oil or fingerprints or you know little dust that has accumulated over the years because the finish at this time has cured for seven days. And here it is, the Nano N3 finish. It's the first time I'm using it, so reading a lot of the instructions, watching YouTube videos, and uh, atte attempting it. So I worked it in half or thirds. And as per the instruction, I just using the pad to draw a window or a square and just slowly working it in and waiting. And I think I waited every time 40 seconds uh, 
before I started to buff it off. And so far, it's working pretty well for me. I'm not getting really uneven parts. And yeah, it's uh, easier than I thought to apply. So this is the base coat or the hard coat. You're supposed to wait 24 hours between the hard, hard coat and the top coat. So I put down, I think, three coats of the hard coat. I started off working in the morning and on the next day, I can come back to apply the top coat to the top surfaces here. After that, the table is pretty much done and I took it to my friend's studio to get some shots and that's what's coming up next so enjoy